Alright guys, this is a long plane review for Kidder Cobra on the uh, Amstrad CPC 464 and it's a little budget cassette release from Mastertronic Software in 1987 and it's one of the coolest and probably the best budget games I've ever owned or played. I love this game to bits and I always love a scramble clone or rip off which is basically what this is and it's exceptionally good probably one of the best scramble clones I've ever played uh, on an 8-bit computer period um, it's actually more based off a little hood of arcade uh, machine called Super Cobra um, which, which itself was a rip off of scramble but with some added bits specifically um, you have to sort of collect and steal some booty at the end of the uh, at the end of the mission uh, I'll pop in some video footage now of that so this is a uh, Super Cobra from uh, Konami in uh, 1981. And as you can see, the little demo sequence there shows you carrying away the booty at the end of the game. Uh, ten sectors to get through to reach the base. Um, very, very, very similar to Scramble. With some slight differences here and there. And instead of destroying... Um, it like an, an alien ship at the end of Scramble or something. Here we're stealing some booty. Uh, note the sound effects here. Um, they're very, very similar. Um, well produced, reproduced, sorry, in uh, Killer Cobra on the Amstrad. And also note that the uh, as you move through sectors, the colours change. And there we go, Super Cobra. Slightly prefer this to the original Scramble. Um, but at the time in the 80s, uh, there was a lot of uh, knockoffs and rip-offs being done. But this is one of the better ones. There we go, Super Cobra. Okay, so yes, and the re I don't normally uh, start off my videos by doing like a live recording like this. Maybe I should do in the future more. Um, but this is Killer Cobra on a real Amstrad CPC 464, and the reason I'm doing this is because I want to show you it in action for real. Um, but apologies for the flicker on the on the camera. Modern cameras don't like old CRT monitors and TVs and stuff like that. But it's really important I showed you this, and there's also a good reason why it's been such a long delay between this video and my last one. Uh, okay, so I'll, very quickly I'll explain why. Um, Killer Cobra has some awesome, um, smooth, and very fast scrolling. Of course, the Amstrad um, is notorious for having really, really poor scrolling. This game, however, has liquid smooth, fast scrolling, and a great frame rate, and looks f and plays fantastically. Um, it's kind of ironic then that when I uh, recorded this and went to encode the final video uh, with my commentary and stuff like that, the scrolling on the resultant video was absolutely awful and rough and. Uh, raggedy or whatever. And it's kind of ironic that <laughs> the one sodding game on the Amstrad, <laughs> well there's actually quite a few, but this game has awesome smooth scrolling and I can't bloody show you it because the resulting video it just it's not smooth enough and I've played around with tons and tons of codecs on different settings, sizes, uh, you know megahertz and uh, frame rates and all sorts and I can't get it smooth. So the the video you're going to see of the actual long play is about the smoothest I can get it to show on YouTube. Ah, um, so here we go. This is I've got my iconic Speed King here. Actually, this game is a nightmare to play on the Speed King because ah, it really does your trigger finger in. It's constantly blasting away. Anyway, sure, we'll get this started up. We're just on the uh, title screen here. Designed and written by Pete Wiseman. Um, completed on the 17th of May 1987. Pete Wiseman, um, don't know much about him. It's rumoured that actually this uh, Pete Wiseman is a pseudonym for Richard Applin, a very famous programme on the Amstrad, Richard Applin. Um, he did like the Double Dragon 1 and 2 conversions, Final Fight, Fly Spy, Shinobi and other brilliant games. Um, the reason why it was rumoured it was him because if you hacked the code and had a look, there's some hidden messages actually from Richard Applin himself. Um, 
and I actually uh, managed to get in touch with Richard and have a chat with him. He confirms he didn't write this game. He may have written like the uh, the loading and protection codes for the game, which he often did for quite a few of the Massatronic titles, um, which are tie in with like the uh, the message about don't hack this game when we actually actually have a look at the code. Um, but he may he said he may have assisted with like some programming on the game, like maybe the scrolling or whatever, because it is absolutely superb. But it may actually be Pete, what Peter Wiseman does actually exist. I can, I can find he's actually listed as program on some fairly modern games as well. So there is a Peter Wiseman out there. But enough rambling, because I do like to talk about the programmers and give them credit. We're going to start this up. Wow, it's a nice little uh, intro sequence there of the helicopter. Very nicely done. It's just showing you uh, the values of the points. Point scoring for whichever enemies. And now we've got the high score table. And we've got a short little demo sequence here of what you need to do. Collect the booty. And there you go. Back to this again. So we'll start it up because we want to get onto the long play. Right, use left and right, uh, to select difficulty, level one, and one is difficult, and number three is impossible, and boy, this game is already mega difficult as it is. I'm going to show you a short clip of this then, and then we'll get on to the actual long play. Okay, here we are on section one. Let's, uh, let's start this off. Sorry about the flicker, about the best we're going to get this. But as you can see guys, the whole point of doing this is to see that on a real Amstrad we've got lovely, silky smooth, fast scrolling. Same with the sprites. God, this is nightmare to play on the conic speaking. Um, lovely sound effects. But there we go. That as you can see, we've got some lovely smooth scrolling. Ah, but apologies for the camera. Modern cameras do not like old fashioned tellies. Maybe I should have done the long play on a real Amstrad. <laughs> but I tell you what, guys, it was so difficult to complete, I'm not going back and revisiting this again. Ah! Let's even get to the uh, meteorite shower. And then we'll stop there and actually start up the proper long play. Oh. Ah! Died. Well, there we go. Anyway, on to the actual long play. And the uh, dump of the cassette uh, I'm using here. Uh, it's got a little cheat on the loading there. You can use uh, Infinity Lives or Fuel. Um, I'm not using either. And we're gonna go through the title screen sequence again. Uh, but this time you'll be able to see it in a lot better detail rather than the horrible flickery thing you saw earlier. And there's the awesome chopper intro sequence that's really cool and nicely done uh, here's all the enemies you can shoot down and their points value and 80,000 points for getting the booty high score table There. That's the very end of the game there, click got to get collect the booty and escape. And there's uh, about I think there's 15 uh, sectors to get through. Unlike 10 in Super Cobra. And uh, I think we'll start it here. Go for level one difficulty, which is difficult, and off we go. Now, uh, I 
don't know how this is going to turn out on YouTube, uh, whether the scrolling will be all well, rough and laggy. Um, the video does lag in a couple of places and it gets a little bit jumpy anyway. Um, I've had to do quite a few edits on this, more on that later. But uh, yes, very very simple game. It's scramble basically and scramble rules. One of the most fun and one of the best uh, of the early arcade games in the uh, early 80s. And this is an exceptional sort of clone of it. Now, as the as the when the screen changes colour or the background or whatever, it means we move to another sector. So this is sector two at the moment. I think it starts to get a little bit dif more difficult with a cave section to get through. Some of them are quite short. Some of them are quite long, like this one. And if you are uh, oh, sector three, and if you die in a sector, you have to um, do the whole sector all over again, which can be quite frustrating. And we've got an, introdu an introduction of uh, some alien creatures here. These sort of green, spluggly things bouncing up and down. Quite difficult to shoot. Um, and a barrier. Ah, sector four. This is where it, this is where it gets really difficult. The, this meteor storm is an absolute swine. And very rarely, as a kid, when I had this game originally, could I ever get past this. And obviously, you got your fuel running out as well. And there we go. Right, moving on. Now, obviously, yeah, the top, uh, the top of the uh, plane area there, we've got a red bar that's always sort of trickling down. That's your fuel level, and you've got to boil, uh, bomb the uh, pink oil things on the bottom there, and that uh, temper uh, that restores a bit of fuel. And you've got to keep going. Doesn't give you much fuel back, so can't just sort of like. Uh, sneak through the game because you've got to be getting some rather awkwardly placed oil uh, canisters at times and on this sector the uh, the tanks actually start shooting back at you and uh, yes yeah, so I can't remember which sector we're on now I've lost track already if you pause the game it will tell you which sector you're on and what your score is I have some new alien creatures, these blue things that dive bomb you when you get close to them. And sometimes some multiple uh, choice of routes for a uh, level. Some of them, rather annoyingly, lead to a dead end. So that would... <laughs> that could be very annoying. Some stalagmites and stalactites there, you can actually shoot the edges off. We'll see more of them later, but yeah, this uh, as you can see, like this, we talked about this plenty of times already. The scrolling, um, oh, there's a dead end section as well there. Scrolling is obviously some kind of hardware scrolling trick. Um, I don't think you'll be able to use this trick on many games. Um, Killer Cobra though is a good example of a type of game that could use this scrolling trick. It takes some very clever programming to, to actually find and do this. And uh, the number of sprites on screen and how they move and stuff probably affects if you can use this scrolling technique or not. So perhaps Killer Cobra and Scramble was a perfect target for this. Another meteor storm here. Uh, really nice, uh, really nicely defined sprites. Helicopter looks great, it's got the rotating uh, chopper blades as well. That was a short section. Ah, oh, the first appearance of these are evil aliens that shoot back at you. Um, these are real swine. You sort of want to move up and down with them at the same time. There's one... Oh, that noise means I'm running out of fuel. <laughs> and when you start running out of fuel, when you get the siren there, um, 
your helicopter becomes far more difficult to control. You sort of, and you've got to really find some fuel very, very quickly. There's one fire button for the game to both fire your like machine gun and drop your bombs. Yeah, a little jump there. I had to do quite a few edits here, and I have, uh, be honest with you guys, use a, a few snapshots to get through the game. Um, but also, um, video footage, original, the raw footage sort of jumps in places, so apologies if you uh, see any sort of lag or jumps here and there. I'm not sure how exactly it's going to turn out when YouTube finally processes the video. But this took a heck of a lot of work. Um, and it's a lot of work for probably only about, I don't know, 300 or so views. Um, I don't really do these videos to get lots of views and comments and stuff like that. Um, but when you put a huge amount of work into a long play like this one, it's a huge amount of practicing and a huge amount of work editing for various reasons. Um, it can be... Uh, a little disheartening at times when only, only, only about 200 people have actually watched the bloody thing but you know I do it for you guys and preserve the Amstrad scene and uh, people see the Amstrad in action in all its glory um, sorry a little jump there I think um, preserve the history and legacy of the Amstrad that's, what I, that's really why I started the channel yeah, got some barriers you have to shoot the bottom of to release them. Very, very difficult. That's a very, very difficult section there. We're not far, not far off the end, to be honest, though. Oh, lovely sound effects! Absolutely love the sound effects. Nice shooting and bombing noises. And really, really nice, colourful graphics and really well done. Very simple, but very effectively done. Really, I can't fault it, to be honest with you. This is probably the best scrambled clone I've ever played. If anyone knows of a better one on the 8-bit system, let me know. Oh, this is a really tight bit here. This is a swine. And we needed to hit a few more oil uh, drums there. And we, you'll see why shortly. I very, very nearly did this about losing a life. <laughs> very nearly you will see what happens very shortly I think we're coming up to the final sector yeah this is sector 15 the final sector tough and uh, there's no more oil drums you can actually hit here there's a the fuel alarm it's getting really tough to control there's the booty and we crash into it because we've run out of fuel basically so I very nearly did it without losing a life but this is the end and just a special mention here to the frame rate on this as well um, very very high frame rate it must be around 30 to 50 frames per second is that smooth yeah we got the booty and we've got to escape and there we go that is killer cobra completed great flying you are now very rich bonus 80,000 points and two extra lives so there we go um just gonna kill ourselves here so we can get back to the uh, title screen and high score table I like that, if you get slightly clipped by a missile, you sort of spin around and then dive bomb uncontrollably into uh, the scenery. Very nicely done. I have to mention as well, the collision detection is absolutely pixel perfect, spot on. So for programming wise, this, this is absolutely awesome. And then to uh, the high score table, which is also, also nicely done. And I think, guys, overall, uh, I'm going to give this a really high score, considering this was a budget game, which you might have paid only like two quid for. Oh, yes, and if you complete, I'll oh, come to the score in a second. If you complete the game, when you start up the next time round, uh, you'll be able to choose the sector to start from if you want to like repractice a sector. There we go. Choose any sector you want. So yeah, score time. Final score. Given that it was only like budget, 
um, scramble clone and it's pr pretty much near perfection I can't really fault it apart from the extraordinarily high difficulty level so for that guys I'm gonna give this game a 9 out of 10 maybe even a nine and a half but there we go thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed I've been wanting to get this game done as a long play for many years and I've finally done it it took a lot of doing so thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed see you soon and I'll hopefully be back with some more long play videos cheers goodbye